on tiny. So if suddenly if you've got someone that's got five and a half to be able to play around, you can put yourself on the front lines and be that meat shield that your visage needs a little bit more. That is definitely one of the issues that we saw with, with the Doom for quite some time. So yeah, the change that he's had for uh, a month or yeah, a bit longer than a month now, we, we've seen kind of how important the armor has been for him to be able to play. I think actually one of the, the bigger reasons why he has the capability to be played as a support, like your trading potential. You see he's got 65 base damage. You mentioned the armor. He's got decent HP regen as well. So yeah, he's definitely a hero that's going to be able to to battle up against them early on, but... I feel like you're going to, as well, on uh, Dreamers, probably look to start three heroes bottom. Like, you want to get this first blood. You want to get your Bristle back off to a good start. And, I mean, Bristle plus uh, Clockwork plus Hoodwink, that's a lot of kill potential. And you've also got the Blightstone here on the Hoodwink. So if Visage didn't buy any armor, which he didn't, then he might be in a little bit of trouble going into that negative armor super early on. So what can Dreamers do in a game like this to to be able to succeed versus Ravens? Because we both feel like Ravens have an advantage heading out of the draft. So what is the path to victory here for the lads on Radiant? Completely shut down the Visage uh, from like the first 15 minutes. I think while the Bristleback, sorry, the Bloodseeker is annoying to play against, he's not going to be the one taking towers. It's going to be the Visage. So if you just enable yourself to have this huge amount of map to play around, uh, Clockwork is a lot better at being able to farm lanes and uh, push things out, given that the Battery Assault, of course, now has lower mana cost. It also does double damage to creeps. Hoodwink can basically one-shot creep waves once she hits level 8. You've got Bristleback that can take jungle creeps. You've got Void Spirit that could be playing around the map. So I think they're just going to try and be a little bit more efficient than Ravens. And does that come off the back of... Because you mentioned the tri-lane being a potential here for, for Dreamers. Does, is that really the, the main way to shut down the Visage, or are we also going to be looking for the, the Void Spirit to, to really put the emphasis on rotating down bottom and, and, instead of helping the offlane? I'm not sure how long they could keep the tri-lane going. I just really want them to start that way. Dad, looks like he'll be not uh, able to secure that banner in for himself, and Zika's actually going to join the Tidehunter up on this top side, so... Not sure how big of a fan of that I am. I mean, it's not like the Blightstone is going to do too much against the Bane and the Bloodseeker, right? They've already got very healthy armor pools, so sure, it's very annoying to just be slowly crossbowed down by a little squirrel, but it's not as devastating as it would have been on that bottom side of the map, at least just for level one. I do think, though, this is a, a lane that is is very, very strong up top for, for Dreamers with the... If you go the, the early point in, in Gush for, for Lissex and along with the, the level two from Hoodwink, Kara could have some issues, but I mean, Bane's got five armor as well. So, I mean, yeah. that's where the Blightstone it's can maybe come into too, play. Though, right? Like the Nightmare plus Blood Rite. Oh, they get a kill even without. Okay. Sexy Yoge. Oh, is he going to be able to snipe the Korea? Yes, he will. <laughs> oh, my. Sexy Yoge. Is this best name in the game as well? At the, uh, in this game in particular? Okay, I was about to say, you're trying to dethrone PP here because PP has a pretty good name too. Uh, no, 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 no. PP, you are uh, your chill brother, but in this game in particular, Sexy Yogi, are, are we going with best name between Dreamers and, and Ravens or? Uh, this game. I think next game, one of the, the players has a, a little bit of a better name. We'll, we'll get into that when we get there. I mean, I, I, just, name. I just can't get him a PP, man. Jean-Pierre oh, Arroyo. No. Oh, dude, look at this. This Mars got... Not the meta bird creep already. Oh, he's got... Oh, Dismar. I thought you said this Mars, and I was like, this Mars? Oh, no, no, no. But it's, Mars it's, it's Dismar. Dismar. Here we Dismar. go. Dismar. Look Say at this, man. Say goodbye to your mana. 100 every time. I get... Yeah, no. Hasta luego. No. Not... <laughs> I mean, this is lane-winning stuff. This is actually mm -hmm. lane-winning stuff. I feel like I've asked you this before, but you've seen the Dubu clip, right? Yes, yes, I have. That, oh, and yeah. I was going to bring it up because I was going to be like, this is... <laughs> look at Sexy Hog is like, all right, if you're going to burn some of my mana, I'll, t <laughs> I'll get some out of you as well with the cogs. Ugh. Not enough, though. I mean, you need to spend two points into it just to get what Dismar gets at level one with the mana burn. 
Oh boy. Uh, this bottom lane's not looking too fun at all for the moment. So that's important for the Visage to get off to a good start. We take a look at how mid lane shaping up. Void Spirit 15 and 2 compared to the 11 and 2 already, but. Ugh. Not enough though. I mean, you need to spend two points into it just to get what Dismar gets at level one with a mana burn. Oh boy. Uh, this bottom lane's not looking too fun at all for the moment. So that's important for the Visage to get off to a good start. We take a look at how mid lane shaping up. Void Spirit 15 and 2 compared to the 11 and 2 already, but the Angor's got a bunch of creeps moving under the tower. Yango Flow. I, I swear, I'm sure someone in chat's going to be like, actually, it's, it's this way, but come on, bruh. Not our native, native language. But you just, <laughs> come on. I'm expecting you, you to do better. You're... Bro, Nyango Flow Keloke is what I'm going to go with, but we'll just call him Nyango. I'm... <laughs> You gotta stop doing this to me, man. Your pronunciation is just too much, too better than mine. It's on top point, lane. I know. Topside Plus, Tidehunter's yeah. about to die. This looks, he's all, oh, no way. Zika no, with no, the no, bushwhack. No, no, no. Okay, Kara. We'll still catch him out. So beautifully done. Ravens in the end, will be able to secure with a kill off the back of Kara with that brain sample. So it's almost though. And they got close to letting the Tidehunter slip away. Yeah, he's saving up a lot of money. Like, he, what, what's he going? Is he going straight into a ring of health? Is he wanting a, a morbid mask just to be able to go into the jungle? I'm not sure what Lissex is specifically saving up for here. Feels like those boots of speed could be real handy. Bottom, Bottom side, lane? it's actually Kuka Hook that's uh, the one getting chased down by a Doom and a Visage. Now the Visage is level three. Boom. Two point soul assumption does a lot of damage and. Well, I was about to say he's going to consider chasing him down, but obviously <laughs> Tier 1 Tower this early on is still way too much of a, a hurdle for Dismar to get through, even with his insane armor. I would be jealous of my pronunciation too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I very much am. I don't think a, a white boy like me is going to be able to somehow have... Bro, have you seen me? you seen I, my skin? I, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to blame something here, but I can't. <laughs> oh. Still pretty well in mid lane is uh, Miggy, just trading basically one for one with Nyango. And when you consider, you know, the fact that Void Spirit, not amazing armor, like four to be able to start the game out. Well, not to start the game, but now that you're level five, feels a lot more confident going into this, uh, this tiny, of course, with the tree grab that's always going to have the right click advantage over you. Not too often you see mid laners go into a quelling blade, is it? But he really needs it this lane. Yeah, because like you said in particular, the the tiny's advantage in regards to the right clicks. But Miki's still doing a very good job to be able to find his CS down bottom. Dismar does have Benjaz to be able no to matter. move on over. Meanwhile, across the map, Zeke is going to go down as well. So we're going to have multiple cures getting picked up here for Ravens. Both their side lanes off to a very good start. It's actually kind of ridiculous how much this uh, mana burn does, right? Like, what can you do against this as a bristle back? You pick this to dominate the uh, the Visage in the lane. And, you know, you might be getting enough farm for yourself, but so is Visage. You know, to be fourth on net worth at six minutes into the game, it's a big win. Mid lane, sexy see Yogo. Observer would get placed here. Yogo. Mm. Gonna have a the Yogo Gorilla. The Yango Flow might be in a bit of trouble with three members nearby. Miki's actually gonna try and turn to deal with the Bane instead. So they see an easier kill into Kara, and they will be able to find it. And it's double supports being able to rotate there to, to secure that one. Meanwhile, the Yango Flow was able to at least pick up the Illusion Rune so he can freshen up in the resources. Lizx did end up going into that Morbid Mask for the, the top lane. I suppose if you're feeling like you're just going to be left solo a lot of the time by the Hoodwink, making the rotations to secure what's a relatively tough lane for a Void Spirit, you just wanted that additional layer of survivability because you know that Dard on his Bloodseeker is going to have it. Here we go, though. Going for the kill onto him. The rotation instantly coming out from the Doom. Let's see if he's going to be fast enough. Kara is nearby to offset some of the damage with the Nightmare. And now that Dard's got some distance away, are they going to consider about going back in? 
It's like yeah, not the case. I know that they really didn't want to. They didn't want to layer their stuns a little bit. But when that blood rider is about to get that silence off, you got to just use the cogs. You know, it would have meant that you still have that battery assault ticking. There's no way for a blood seeker to just jump out of the cogs. So would have been able to secure that kill. Let's look like now that at least the dooms evacuated out of bottom. Kuka Hook's having a, a much better He's time against the visage. It. Chosen, He's yeah, that was, I was like, evacuate, probably not the, the best way to put it. Dart up top. He's going to be in trouble. Kara's a little bit too split away. He's going to try and get there for the nightmare. Sexy Yoko, He's meanwhile, as well. He's in trouble. Looks like with Nianko Flow even showing up as well. He's going to try and turn to get rid of... Uh, the Tide Hunter, a second kill potentially getting picked up for the side of Ravens. Even though Tide's able to step out of the blood right, they need a little bit more right click damage. Neutral. But it'll be the neutral creep that gets it instead. They're relatively healthy up here and actually had a, a TP rotation come through from Miggy. So he's going to move back on towards the mid lane. Not even going to get lucky with being able to pick up that rune for himself. And it's going to be Dismar taking the double damage. Doom having a fantastic start to his game too. Might even keep it there for Nyango, like you need additional attack damage as a tiny. Gives you a bit. And 51 damage. I wonder what they want to try and do with the DD now, because this is pretty much a guaranteed kill into anyone they want. Maybe the bristle back you'll need another hero to rotate. So I wonder if they consider about smoking down bottom after shoving another creep wave and, and playing with the familiars, because if they get a kill, then that can really open up the tower. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like that is certainly a possibility. You've got... Uh, you're going to have decent aura items on uh, Benjaz very soon. Even just being able to pick up that little bit of extra HP in uh, HP regen. It's going to be too handy from two. Do at least have back of the jungle. Starting to make some stacks up for this X, so that's where the Morbid Master is going to be able to come into play. I've got the hard camp stack. Kyra is in a very good position. They know though, this is going this on, now. though. Yeah, they have the ward at the triangle. No, bottom lane, though. Kuku looks are going to be in some trouble. Dart with the rotation down as well. They need to hold a stunt to cancel the TP, and that's where Dismar comes into play. Infernal Blade out to stop him in his tracks, and meanwhile, they're back away towards a little bit. the triangle. They're not only stealing the stack, they're also getting the kill on Delisex. But Migi is going to look to show up and at least rectify the death. Getting Kara put into the grave, but that is not worth it at all. Ravens, another incredible movement across the map. Yeah, he almost wanted to die there on the Bane. Completely out of mana, didn't have any regen outside of the uh, the magic wand. So he'll happily take that trip back to the base if it means taking a kill onto the enemy position three, as well as securing a lot of those, uh, those camps that were stacked up. And now, like you were saying, opens up that bottom side of the map, right? You've got AoE through the uh, the buckler, through the rig of Basilius. You've got the pushing power of the familiars. And now suddenly a whole bigger area of the map is opened up for you on Ravens. And they could even go mid if they want to really quickly here. Ravens, okay, no, they're going to make a call instead of defending top. They have the Doom ready. Kara, unfortunately, will not have Fiend's Crypt to work with. They're going to run into Sexy Yoga here. Should be a pretty free kill, although they actually gets woken up by the Scorched Earth there. So will he be able to get away? Seems like he might. In fact, they want to move in. Zika considering about stepping into the outpost. It's a really nice placement out of the clockwork. This now prevents Ravens from defending top. And they weren't prepared to also get a little bit of damage onto the T1 tower. So it looks They're like Dreamers... need to pay attention to bot, though. You're pushing this with a, uh, a Visage. You see TP's happening from the clockwork. So he's going to back off. And maybe now they feel confident enough to push on forward, considering they're going to have the outnumber if they choose to make that rotation. Seems like Nyango Flo just wants to make sure that this Siege Creep isn't in mid anymore before he does make that movement. Dard's coming top two with Kara. his rupture. Sharpshooter, not enough to get the kill for the moment. Ravage is out, clipping onto three, but where's the fall up? Miki, he's hesitant about jumping into the middle. He'll chuck a remnant nonetheless to help get the kill, but you're just letting a tired on to be fed to the wolves. This is your off lane. That's not a worthwhile trade with Ravage being expended as well. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just 
giving this really easy start to to your visage. He's now got the Vlad's offering available for him. They didn't have to use the Glyph because of the Clockwork TP, so that's a little bit of a positive coming through, but you still just need to be so conscientious of where you can look to push around now. I, I think you make a play around mid now that you've got the uh, the Vlad's offering. If they use the Glyph, then just rotate Lane? towards bot. A lot of damage onto Kara once again, they but broke Ravens... The tree. They're gonna think about jumping in instead as Miki steps out to the right, so at least they don't find the Doom, but they get the Fiend Grip. Kara off the back of the kill, finding the level six, and even Dismar well. feels that they need the Doom required to hold the Void Spirit down into place. With the Nightmare being up in a couple of seconds, not the Ango Flow is just gonna toss Dismar even closer as Raven. They've got all the answers to Dreamers in this game one. This net worth lead starting to get. A bit out of control, sexy Yoga is gonna make them work for it. Should be able to get the deny with how many creeps there are. Easy Another clap. neutral deny. We've had two this game so far. And yesterday we had a couple as well. I hope that's part of the, the TI predictions for real. You know, how many neutral denies are there gonna be in the old compendium, the battle pass? Always a fan of putting in my predictions there. Did I ask you like who you had as your SA qualifier prediction winner? Oh, Niango flew with the blink reveal. Haro tries to step in with the nightmare, but just a little bit too far away. Um, no, you did not. I had Infamous down. Who, who do you have? Of course you would. Okay. Cool. Oh, right. you had a Corey. That's right. Yeah. Well, we'll see who's right. Look at this. You got Visage making the first rotation through with that Vlad's. Zika? This is pretty scary. You don't want to give up here? a T1 for free. Up to the north, the sharp should all make it down to the low ground, but look at the avalanche from the Ango Flow. He's going to be able to target down the clockwork for the moment. Meanwhile, to the northern side, though, Google Hook is controlled. The Rupture just holding the Brissa back into place and will now expire so we can reposition. But I don't think Reading can take the team fight even with the Tidehunter trying to move over. But look at Niango Flow. Another jump in with the tiny combination. Just catches up to the Void Spirit on the high ground. And he's even looking for more. Blink up in a couple seconds. He's got the men off for the combination once again. Dreamers, gotta be cautious here. The Tide Hunter's not gonna be ever so tanky with the damage that's getting pumped out. But the Ango Flow, he's hesitant. Doesn't wanna stick around. It's gonna cut through the tree line and find a blink to escape. You're fairly satisfied with this, but they know how little HP Kuka Hook has to play around. They need to back off though with ult, unless, unless the Ango Flow is able to get that initiation. If he could look to take out Lizex, that'd be a big win. But it looks like they want to back off, maybe thinking that they've got a few more sentry wards around that mid lane. He just pings it out now with a range creep attacking him. So wanting to be a little bit more hesitant playing around that area because the Ravage turnaround is real, especially when you're fighting underneath uh, the enemy tower. And, and look how fast they're playing on Ravens. This is a really awesome move. Top's getting shoved out. So they're expecting someone to come defend this. And, and they're going to be right. If they stay a little bit longer, they will see Kuka Hook. Oh no. Does the I think the the observer would just caught him there as he was right next to the secret shop. So let's see if they continue to hang around. Smoke's about to break in a couple of seconds, so they won't see the Bane retreating back just yet. But that could have been huge. They, they still did use the glyph on mid though, right? And with the new change to the glyph, you can take mid, you can take top, you can take bottom tier two. You might have a fight by the already... oh, yeah, look at this with the triangle. Oh okay. no. They want to really steal that. quick from Dreamers. Yeah, it was just sexy Yoga. He placed an Observer Ward down. Meanwhile, Niango Flow is going to try and move, and, and Benjos is even teeping. Look at the backstab. They're just making no sure they can pluck all the escape avenues. Zeke is out to the left. Sexy Yoga is going to be able to TP out, but at least Kara will hold back the Hoodwing. So, I, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> Niango, uh, I, I believe. Oh. <laughs> the scurry, the scurry evasion nearly got him. Uh, yeah, it was really Still nice. Though. Good kill. We saw the, the clockwork is just up to his shenanigans. He, I, I think, read the movement from the, the Bloodseeker taking the stack and then dropped the ward down to, to finally get confirmation. And then instantly Dreamers pivoted to his location. So really nicely played. I mean, that's a big kill for them to find because Dart, he was, he was currently, uh, before that death, he was flawless. They really want to continue playing around this mid lane. Now they know that there's no TP reinforcements option available for Ravens. They don't have a glyph. It, to me, this is the patch of the glyphs. I think like it's completely changed the dynamic of how teams are needing to play this game. And I want to see Ravens look to abuse that as much as possible. Maybe they're just waiting for this level 12 on the Visage that he's so close to picking Top up. Top lane? 
Hookshot in from the clockwork. Dart is incredibly close to a tier 2 tower, but Radiant, they do have a lot of heroes nearby. They feel strong enough to take a fight inside Raven's territory. There we go. I... Level 2 familiars. I'm going to take away the bounty rune, and if I'm, if I'm Visage, I want to push bottom. Oh, it's actually... Found. Goes for the stun with the uh, the stone form on the familiar. Doesn't have the hook shot just yet on sexy Yogi, so I don't know if you could get this aggressive. They have the blink on Dismar as well, so Raven's looking to try and take a, a bigger team fight. Clockwork is not the fish they want to fry. The Kuka Hook is definitely one of them, but instead they'll still jump the clock. An easy kill, and now they can turn to Kuka Hook. But the they buyback's going to come out for the Clockwork. They've got the Ravage as well. This X just needs to find a way to enter the fight. They don't have vision, though. That's the big downside. They, well, I suppose they've got the one right next to the tower, but it's not that cliff ward, so you can't see anyone looking to come from the south. They would have been able to catch out Clockwork and maybe get that solo pick off onto him for the dieback if they were. But again, I feel like they're relatively satisfied. You've got only about a thousand gold away from being able to hit this BKB timing for Dard. Then it's fully go time. You've got everything else that you could possibly need. Blink Dagger on your Doom. Almost have the Aghanim Shard on your Visage. Blink on the Tiny Plus. And this is their timing right now. Might look to bait that regen. But looks like they're going to back off in time. I think they know Just the play bot. ward is... Well, I, I don't see what's holding them back from playing bot. No glyph, 45 seconds. Visage with Wraith Pact and level 2 familiars and hitting all your items. Because you see, oh, the Ango Flow, an aggressive jump. Doesn't have the damage to blow up Zika for the moment. TPs have started to come on out. They need a way to protect the Tiny. Wraith Pact might be able to enable this for the moment. He's got a big streak that they want to take out, but Dismar is in. Fiend's Grip as well to lock the Brissa back down into place. The has got the follow up as well. And there's nothing they can do to protect the Brissa back. Dismar, no hesitation with the Doom afterwards, wanting to really secure the kill. But Radiant, they still want to turn it around. They've got the Void Spirit showing up. They even have Lissex as well with the Ravage. You gotta make sure you don't group up, but they do just that. Ravage hits onto three, but where's the damage? Migi is gonna be lacking some ultimate charges now. Love Still Zika's gets the kill in. onto one. They gotta be cautious though, because Dard's nearby. Ruptures at the ready. Finds a target onto Migi. They've got the Familiars to chase him down as well. Kara's gonna step to the back line. It looks like they should finally be able to get the kill. This X is doing an incredible job to stall this out. So Ooh. Miki just they gets him, away. Though. Rupture expires in the Void Spirit's out. And you still don't get the T1 tower. Surely they have to get onto this, but now the respawns are starting to come up. So, oh man, I, I feel like Dart is just being a little bit too passive. The to me, there wasn't the reason for him to be farming all the way back underneath the safety of his triangle. You can actually see a Brigand's Blade being pinged out there by him as well. So if he's there at the beginning of that fight, they win that, no doubt in my mind. Top lane, you got a, an arcane now to play with for me. He might. This might, yeah, he's actually going to jump in for it. Why not? It might come at a cost of his own life. Meanwhile, to the high again, though. They're trying to target the tide. In fact, they're just looking to avoid the tide to her and, and be lining straight to the Void Spirit. Silence into the chain control. It needs to be perfect. The hookshot might prevent that. It's sexy. You went in. Get a hookshot to try and delay it, but it doesn't matter because the Void Spirit jumps into the middle. They still got to be cautious, though. The Brissa back. A real menace throughout these team oh. fights, but the Rupture will hold him into place, but they don't have a ways to deal with the Tiny's damage output. Is Nianko flow time and time again, finding the combinations. He's going to have another round of the abilities up shortly as well, but Dreamers playing around their tier 1 tower, trying to set up the formation. Maybe they'll turn to the Bristleback instead, but they're falling low. They've got to be cautious. No this one's going It's looking Ooh. almost unkillable. They'll get rid of everyone else, but Kukahook will still live. Oh, it's not quite at that very, very scary point for the Bristleback himself just yet, but... It's a little unfortunate that you have to die on the Bloodseeker. At least they do have the uh, the Aghanim Shard coming through from him now. Again, it's... Did they just use the Glyph again? I, I'm not mm. sure why. It really feels like they just think they're still playing on the previous patch. They don't have a Glyph for this bottom lane. And this is exactly where Ravens have the vision at the moment. Just such a big teamfight win. You've got the Doom up again. Again, Visage isn't really one of those heroes that relies on these 
massive cooldowns, right? You just want to use your Wraith Pack, you want to use the drums, and have that consistent damage coming through. Fiend's Grip is nice, but it's not necessary. And again, Bloodseeker, while the Rupture is nice, it's going to reach this stage in about 500 gold, where you don't even need that. They have fred it to the Doom top. Sexy Yoga does have the rest of the team starting to move over. The first rotation is going to come out, but the Visage won't do too much to keep Dismar alive. They'll pick off, but what can they get out of it? Do they can... Oh, I don't think they can rush. Uh, There's a they little bit slow drop in the Wraith Pack there, unfortunately, on, uh, on Benjaz. Maybe you would have been able to let the Doom survive if that's the case. I mean, they've got Minus Armor. They've got the, uh, the Gush. They've got the Blightstone on the Hoodwink, and you've got the Viscous Nasal Goose, so... They're feeling confident. Do they have vision of this, though? They have the high ground ward, and yeah, they did. I, I just toggled over to it, and they would have seen the resident pulse come outside the pit, so they know exactly what's happening. Sexy Yoga. Charging up the hook chop in the anger. Flo's going to be in with the combo, but the double damage room. Not enough to get the kill. A beautiful placement that Cogs forces the Tiny to stay in the river, and he won't be able to escape. Does a big pick off to start the fight, but Dard is just ripping them apart. The Bloodseeker with the triple kill. No answers to Dodd. They deal with the Tiny, but they leave the Bloodseeker incredibly free just to charge one hero down after the other. An ultra kill for the Bloodseeker, and now the Roche for them to take. Yeah, prime for the taking. More than 4,000 damage done by the Bloodseeker alone in that fight. It, it just shows the power against this Blood Rage Aghanim Shard when you're up against three strength heroes on the enemy, particularly someone like the Bristleback that's already such a main focus of everything else. He's going to get ruptured so that he can't continue to run into the fight. It was a good initiation coming through, or rather a counter initiation from Sexy Yogi. That Cog's completely blocking off the Tiny and allowing them to swarm onto him, but they're just too far behind, unfortunately, that they weren't able to truly capitalize. Look at this. Another quick play from Ravens with the smoke. Are they going to run into it? It's going to be Zika, who's got Lissex behind him with the Ravage and the Tendrils at the ready. Looks like the Hoodwink is just going to go down. An easy couple of stuns and a yoink from then Niengo Flo, who has had a incredible game, Denok. 10, 2, and 9. I hold that thought because maybe... Almost getting caught out by Dismar. A remnant to buy him some space, and it looks like he should be okay. Oh, did he get the vision? Oh, don't I don't think, think so. he did. Yango Flo with the uh, the Shadow Blade pickup it means he doesn't have that item slot. He's actually even been really good at the small things, like using the Quelling Blade to cut the Hoodwink tree just to reduce some of this initial lockdown coming through from Dreamers. So. Yeah, he's having a fantastic game, and that's one of the advantages that you get when you got that second pick, right? You get to choose what your lanes are, and for something like the Tiny, that's, I would say, 80% of the time these days, a position four, just to surprise them with that last pick, mid lane. It's a big win coming through from Ravens. And now, again, no glyph means this tower goes bye-bye. Do we feel like the Scepter on Bristleback is going to be... A big change at all, or are they just too far ahead on Ravens and, and, and have a, a bit too many answers for him? I think Bristol's only really going to be a factor again once he's got this SNY and the BKB. It, it can't even be one or the other. Just because you're going to be getting ruptured every fight, that's basically certain. So that's what you need the SNY for. Also, just that little bit of extra movement speed and yada yada, everything else that comes along with it. But you need the BKB because if you're ruptured, you're probably going to get uh, Avatos combo. You're probably going to get uh, blood, blood right and silenced. And then you can't even use all these abilities that you've spent 4,200 gold on being able to just spam out. Top lane, this X is incredibly deep here, but I... I guess is oh. the name of the game here. The, the one. The ten He's got the Tendi. Yeah, well. Yeah, this X will still. Uh, slow and painful death, unfortunately, for the Tyne Hunter. But you see the read of Dream is in a game Unless. like this. Like, even the clockwork is oh. just shoving out mid, so they're Give under the. Tendi. the yep, one more Tendi. Oh! Give him the anchor as well. Just buy some time. Oh. Why not Ravage? You see, look, Sexy Yoga is going to cut three waves almost. Finally, they'll they'll TP Kara back just to make sure that this clockwork can't keep up to his shenanigans, but he's uh, going to go to the top instead. You are a, a dead man. <laughs> 
Mission accomplished though. Like if you've used the glyph and they're killing your position five as opposed to taking some kind of objective with the uh, Aegis, you're very happy. I mean, Dart still with the advantage they've got is going to be able to get a tier one for free, but it certainly could have been a lot worse. Could have been another tier two, could have been high ground being breached. So I feel like they're all right with that. They've got a really nice ward as well for Radiant to play the triangle. This could set up mainly just to help them keep bottom shoved in, but it could set up for a kill on the Ango flow. Three heroes nearby. They're going to try and move in with the sharpshooter. Let's see if the burst is going to be enough. There's no TPs coming out at all, and that is all off the back of the observer ward place from Dreamers. Beautifully done. And out of top, very, look very at this. Nice. TPs are coming out. Oh no, the hook shot. Sexy Yorige just off the mark. They should be able to deal with the first life thanks to Zika. They've got the Ravage at the ready. This mark's going to be in. A Doom though, beautiful read, just taking out of the Tide Hunter. They don't have the Ravage to damage. turn this fight around and now Dar just chases it down the Bristle back. The pure damage thanks to the Aghanim Shard is something that the Bristle just cannot handle. I mean, he's taking like a ton of <laughs> physical damage every second. He's just farming cogs at this stage, getting about a hundred uh, hundred gold from each cogs that Sexy Yoge places down with all of that attack speed that Dart's got. And yeah, you don't even need to put yourself in a risky position. Just let the oh, familiars do the work. That's a big jump. The damage coming out, they might actually be able to get Benjas. One more right click. They need a way to be able to cancel the Fiend's group. Sexy Yoge. There we go. The battery is salt. We'll be able to cancel that one. Now another follow up as well for the stun lock. Dizma doesn't get some distance away. And oh, Amigi. Could die. Considering about going for Dart, but the first movement speed will get the Bloodseeker back to the high ground. Hang on, Dart. He's moving fast. He wants to go back in because he sees the clock work. Okay, no. Just He's stuck in the tree. Easy pickings and out. They'll go back for the beam, though, because the Anchor Flow is back alive. A Ravage to hold them back, but where's the damage follow up? The Anchor Flow is going to be able to toss Slick Sex closer to Dart. But the there's the Tendies, Niango Flow. This is another big kill. Multiple deaths in a row for your Tiny. And Dreamers, they're not out of this. Okay, yeah, they defend that high ground. They, well, I think they take a tier three, but well worth it to be able to get the Aegis hey, well, taken away to get a kill. Clockwork. Beautiful look shot. Oh. Catches out Dodd. Gonna be cautious, though. Oh, Kukuhu going fighting. up against the Bloodseeker. He's gonna get the life still back for the kill. No way, Dodd is out, and Dismar's in, though. The Doom's still on cooldown, but Dismar, he's got the Aghanim Shard to play with, so the extra damage, but there's no follow up. All he needed was a plus one, and they could have had some kill threat onto the Bristleback. Let me do some quick maths here with the Doom. All right, uh, multiple of three or above 24. So he's waiting for the enemy's timing. I don't think there's too many times people look to do that. They're like, all right, is he level 18? All right, let's go try and kill him. Oh, that, that ward again. It'll get the kill, maybe. It looks all Ooh. the bounce for the acorn, the damage. No way, no way, 40 health, <laughs> what? Finally, they get rid of the D1. I would have been a huge one if it killed off the Tiny and the Bloodseeker. All right, they're back in this game. And it's not a 100% win probability. Oh, Still very go. heavily favoring Ravens, but uh, that's to be expected. 10k net worth lead. You've hit a fair few of your timings, but I do have to wonder, like, how much more scaling potential do you truly have? Once again, Bristleback, he's got the SNY, and he's approaching that BKB. I feel like once he's got that and the level 20, things really, really start to pick up for Dreamers if they're able to get to that stage. So oh, they've got one more glyph to be able to play around on uh, on Dreamers' side. They've got to make sure that they're just not losing racks for free. Is this a Boots of Bearing? No, an AC about to be completed for Ben Jets. Nicely done. Yeah, float. Ooh. Ooh. Smoke up. Dreamers piloting their way down to bottom. They do not have a ward They're to play with at the moment. using this illusion. This Tidehunter illusion is giving them a lot of information. So, yeah, they're eventually going to have to back off as a team. If they were clumped up a little bit more, they would have been susceptible to that Blink rag Ravage coming out from the Tidehunter. I like this smoke a lot from Ravens. You got a top lane that's getting shoved in, so you could be anticipating someone to defend it. And if no one's there, at least you get wards down by the triangle to set up for this next Roche. 
And it's going to be up in three minutes instead. So not an early roast spawn, but this is definitely the, the side of the map that you need to start controlling now to get ready for that roast. I feel like all the Ravens need to do, though, is just continue to shove in all of these lanes. Like, there shouldn't be too much stopping them from doing it in two separate lanes because of the visions they've got. Oh. Lane, jump Ravage. in. The Ravage is out as well with the Bloodseeker. He's going to be in trouble for the Nightmare Dawn. Can he get some distance with the BKB? Steps out to the northern side. A rupture for good measure to hold Yanko's them back. Coming. But now with the Bloodseeker out of the team fight, Dreamers, do they still feel strong enough to turn it? Ben Jazz, though, just shot. Look at him go, man. This visage. He's got no one behind him but a Wraith pack, and he's just sending them packing. He is very scary, of course, having the stone form as well for that turnaround potential. Might. Wow, well, they don't even go for the familiars. Instead, it's an immediate smoke. Just trying to catch them out, thinking that maybe they're going to be a little bit passive with that Ravage still on cooldown. So making sure to show Lizex in the lane. And it's only Dismal that they pick up. That'd they're going to go for Benjaz instead, but the Aghanim Shard holding the back for the moment. Off to the triangle, though. Tiny blows up one. Meanwhile, Dismal gets a Doom onto the Bristle back as well. They need to retreat. Raid it. They can't take this fight. They're going to try and buy some time for the Bristleback to be able to get out of harm's way. They've done a beautiful job at doing so. And now they can counter-initiate and go back in. But the Void Spirit's in trouble. They've got no answers to the Fiend's Grip. It's a Bushwhack just coming out too late. Another decent use of the attendees, but yeah, it just wasn't enough. And again, I, I'm, I'm not sure how big of a fan I am of this, uh, this build on the Bristleback. Like, he's going into the AC. I'm not really seeing what it's going to provide to the team. I feel like you've got enough minus armor already coming through from your Aghanim Scepter. And even just in terms of providing armor for yourself, that's not where the majority of the damage is coming from. It's from the Bloodseeker in my eyes. I feel like if the Bristleback is able to just not man fight the Bloodseeker, have him controlled up by the rest of his team, he's going to be in a really good spot. But if it gets to that stage where you're looking to rely on a plate mail to give you oh, that no, extra layer of survivability, <laughs> it's not going to be great. Did the tiny just... Dive? Yeah, oh yeah, in front of a D3 tower. Oh no, this is almost scepter completed. Oh no, he's got the 20 talent too. Tiny's gonna be dealing a lot of damage in fights. Hmm? Well, sexy, oh yeah. This is another deep dive. They don't have the gem at the moment. Beautiful use of the familiar stun. Look at the kill to the clock. Go on Meanwhile, to down to the triangle, though. Dismar. The chain control is perfect, allowing the rest of the team to flow on over to get another kill onto Lissex. Just playing very sprit on Dreamers. Three heroes going down across the map. That was the the enemy timing. The level 18 Tide Hunter meant that he got stunned up for that little bit longer and wasn't able to get the escape through. And here we go. One of my favorite ags in the entire game. Good old tree volley coming through there means that you can play a lot more on the back lines means you can get that that full combination off right tree volley throw in into blink avatos combo is just an insane amount of damage i believe i saw someone with the uh Jesus. yeah there's uh dooms holding onto the ceremonial robe as well so that's pretty dangerous i would hope that nyango flow picks up a neutral item because right now he's got nothing Nothing on the Where's courier the either. Yeah, I was looking nope. for that as well, seeing if he had anything. He's got nothing. Maybe just flop at him with the Yoga Seal Totem. You've even got a, a reliable form of break now as well with that Silver Edge. This is going to be a difficult defense from Dreamers. 20,000 deficit. 4% probability as well. And they're not even anywhere near a, a potential of a double Ravage. In fact, Lissex is even queuing up a Halberd as well. So they're going to have to make do with only one Tidehunter ultimate. They do against this. I mean, Sexy Yoga is, again, trying to cut lanes. Just shoving out bot even with his rocket as much as he can. Looking to keep only one lane the focus as it's pushing in relatively well protected with multiple heroes, even just a, a Void Remnant coming through there. Looks like they will be able to get away on Sexy Yoga, so nice little movement coming through there with the jetpack to be able to provide it with that little bit of extra vision. They see Miki down bottom with the lane ward. There's Marikara, the duo supports, trying to catch up. 
He I don't think he scored the Scourge Earth Particle. Oh, they get the Rupture though. Miki? In no way. No way. All right. Beautifully done. Yeah. It's all about stalling. Wait for this Aegis to time out. It's another three minutes, so it's a long game of cat and, cat and mouse. But again, for me, you still need this BKB on the Bristleback. He isn't getting a super amount of value from a lot of these items. And oh, yeah, go flow. I'm sure he would have been tempted to try and go for the kill there onto the Bristle. But even with his Silver Edge, can't do it solo. He's a neutral item, brother. Come on. Maybe once these items drop now, he'll realize he doesn't have one. Yeah, there we go. He's like, oh, I have a spell prism. Honestly, as a tiny, it's pretty nice. Yeah, I was going to say 13 second cooldown on tree volley. Look, the towers melt. This is going to take a lot of damage here. AC. There we go. I was really expecting the tree volley to do more than a couple of trees. One swipe. Nyango flows the siege, it looks like. I don't think he's the one that wants to be sieging. I think he's gonna jump. A lot of poke damage for the moment. I may will dissuade them from following up. Garo's doing a really good job as well, just with these nightmare saves. It offered like he's saved the Bloodseeker twice, even just then, looking to give Nyango float. Oh, rupture. It gets reflected by the Lotus Orb, so can't go in on Dart. Nice, quick fingers coming through there from this X. Darks is still falling. They might look to go in with the sharpshooter. I ain't gonna stun anyone back, so that one's gonna fly on past. Uh, top Splits is the middle, and well, getting it's <laughs> just a range. It's just a range. It doesn't matter. But I mean, maybe two creep waves inside your base does matter. <laughs> yep, the flew now. We've seen that the void spirit's top go. lane. It's a deep dive behind the buildings. The anger flow. Look at the rabbit to cover them as well. That's beautiful from this X. They need to fall up damage. They're going to try and do a cover towards the back line, but this means the blood seek is going to free fire. Just charges down the bristle back. And now we can clean up. Turning to the void spread. Bastions galore. It just simulates out, but Nyango Flow is in a perfect position to stop him in his That's tracks. And now Dard, once again, a blink on forward onto this X. As Ravens, one team fight it was looking like a good start for Dreamers, but not enough for them to stall this out. A couple of hits with the tree volley. Might even oh, get sexy Yoke as well as Niango Flow. The star player for them in a game one here. 18, 5, and 14. What well, an incredible performance from the position two on Ravens. Yeah, you, you give him the game to be able to just execute. Lots of help around the mid lane. I, I really like the way the Ravens drafted. This was pretty much went to expectation, right? Going for really strong lanes in at least two of the lanes, getting really lucky with the uh, the mana burn creep being picked up. But some of it's luck, some of it is failing to block up the camps. That is one of the things that absolutely needs to happen whenever you're up against, you know, this enchant.